Hi everyone, welcome to the Elite 8 edition of the Bison video blog. Here we sit in the middle of uh, December for the second straight year, Jeffrey. The Bison are still playing football. NDSU set for a quarterfinal date with Lehigh, the Mountain Hawks out of the Patriot League are coming to Fargo this weekend, Saturday at 3 o'clock. Before we get going, we got to say a massive thank you to all of our viewers and everyone on the internet this weekend. We had over 11, almost 12,000 people that watched the live blog with us on Saturday. Over 800 comments for the game uh, for James Madison. So thanks to everybody. We're going to crank it even more again this coming week. My head's still spinning yeah. from that game. 800 comments and we tried our best to answer <laughs> we most hope of so. them. We tried. And I know a lot of them were on TV and we'll deal with that in a second because there's looks like the Bison may be in the same boat again uh, this coming Saturday. Here comes Lehigh, Jeff. This is not a Patriot League team uh, that we're used to. We saw Le Lafayette in the opening game of the season. Lehigh brings in Chris Lum, a guy who's a finalist for the Walter Payton Award, which is the Heisman of the FCS. He is a fantastic quarterback. The stats are almost unbelievable. It's like seven-man football stats. <laughs> 333 completions and 491 attempts 4,090 yards. Yeah. That's a lot of 4,090 yards, 32 <laughs> touchdowns. His top receiver, he has uh, single season receiving stats, 96 receptions for Ryan Spadola, I believe it's how you pronounce it. 96 receptions yeah. in one year. Most guys don't have that double that in a right, career. Right, in a career. And that's what Lehigh brings to the Fargo Dome. And this Mountain Hawks team went on the road last week for the second straight year. They won a road FCS playoff game. Last year was Northern Iowa, which we'll get to in a second. But they beat the Colonial champ in Towson, scoring 40 points. Now they got a safety late to win the game. But this is not, when we get to this stage, all the teams are really good. But this is not your average run-of-the-mill Patriot League team. Yeah, it goes back to the quarterback, like we just yeah. said. That being said, let's get to the keys of the game. Bison are need two interceptions. They didn't force any turnovers essentially. Against uh, James Madison, they got a late interception, interception. on the last mm -hmm. play of the game, but the Bison need to get, get a couple picks from Chris Lum to, to sway the field position. Now here come the Mountain Hawks playing the vaunted three-four. Mountain Hawks, yeah, I know Used they were the they were the engineers, and they they wanted to go away from just being known as an engineering school, so they they changed their nickname. Uh, from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, by the way, just for your nerd stat of the day. But here we go with the 3-4 again. And I asked Craig Bull, and, you know, he he, he kind of made light of it now that the Bison addressed it in the earlier part of this season after the struggles with Southern Illinois. They didn't have any with Missouri State. Uh, but this is a different team. It's a better team than Missouri State. Do they change up the offensive line again like they did earlier this season? Good question. He left that open. And what the change is is you take Austin Richard from left guard and move him over to center, meaning you put a bigger guy at center over their nose guard Correct. and switch uh, Joel Jo Lund over to guard. And actually, Joel Lund played guard. <laughs> After Tyler Gimmiston's injury. Right, had, but yeah. apparently Gimmis said we'll be back. Now, that'll be the question all week. I don't know if NDSU's going to tip their hand. We could probably ask him every day all yeah. week, and I think they might get the hem and high answer. And we're probably going to ask all week about Ryan Smith. He was not available, did not play Saturday. Brock Jensen's passing numbers and stats suffered for it. The Bidens still won. I think the running game will be much more important for NDSU this week if they can keep Gene, uh, Lehigh off the field. But Ryan Smith needs to be back out there for NDSU. And who would have thought Ryan Smith as a running back out of Wapiton, yeah. North Dakota, would be so valuable as a receiver. In the passing game. But he's just been unbelievable in his hands and his feet, and he runs great routes. We, Brock Jensen's on the same page with Warren Holloway and Ryan Smith, yeah. and a little bit somewhat uh, with, with, Nate uh, Moody. with Nate Moody, yeah. but otherwise, it's, uh, it's I think it's a big timing difference between the starters and the backups. We mentioned as well how big Matt Velman was during the game and a couple of big catches on third down, one specifically that set up the Sam O'Jury touchdown that made it a 16-7 uh, to seven lead for NDSU. Let's go back. We mentioned Marcus Williams in our postgame show on Saturday. Had his first, I can say, bad game of the season. He's going to be one of those guys that will have to be a main focus. And what Lehigh does, if they want to get it to their guy who had 96 receptions, you got to imagine Marcus is going to be matched up with him on Saturday. Well, if he's called a shutdown corner, right. here's the ultimate test yeah. for young Marcus. Yeah, didn't have the greatest game last uh, Saturday, but uh, I, I would anticipate him uh, and just the dynamic athlete that he is. To uh, That'll be a great matchup, Absolutely. him and Spadola. Colton Hegel, we're not quite sure yet if he's going to be back in the lineup. Bobby Ullman had a few nice tackles in the game, but Hegel is a difference maker in the secondary if he can get back in the lineup. But I don't know if Hegel's so necessary against a passing happy team. Hegel's so good on the run. Mm. He's one of the best run stoppers in the country in his level. Against the pass, I'm guessing you're going to see a lot more nickel. You're probably going to see a lot more of uh, of uh, you know, five D-backs or four D-backs. Carlton Littlejohn will probably see the field mm. a little more as a linebacker. 
DJ McNorton was fantastic last week. We mentioned that on Saturday. We saw his resurgence and what he meant to the Bison last year during their playoff run with big games against Robert Morris and obviously the huge game with Montana State. He was terrific against Eastern Washington. This is what NDSU was hoping for all season, and now it's maybe coming at the best time when, to get DJ back. Yeah, it literally looked like a step faster he really did. than he did yeah. in the regular season, and because of the heel injury and some other injuries that he said were nagging, nagging yeah. injuries, yeah, he got that, <laughs> whatever that week off, he got that yeah. step back. Now, I mentioned earlier here in our video blog about Lehigh's success. They went to the Unidome last year, Jeff, a place where NDSU has never won, and beat Northern Iowa. They will not be intimidated coming into a dome, but the crowd they had last year for Northern Iowa was over a Thanksgiving weekend. We're anticipating, again, 18,000 on Saturday. It's going to be much louder than what they faced in uh, Cedar Falls on Saturday. Right, and it makes a difference, of course, against a passing team. Yep. Now, if you call a play a, a 31 power, well, there's not a lot at the line that you really need to adjust to. <laughs> but if you go up to the line of scrimmage, you're in shotgun formation, Which and like you see do. a different setup in back there, then you have to yell at an audible. The James Madison Justin quarterback said, that, yeah. said he was hoarse by the yep. end of the first quarter. Crowd does make a difference. Let's talk about the other uh, three matchups. As we mentioned, we're down to the Elite Eight. There's two teams left from the Missouri Valley, two from the Big Sky, only one from the Colonial, I'll have to mention. That's Maine. Uh, Northern Iowa goes to Montana. That, that could be a national championship game any other year. This year it's a quarterfinal game. That sets up as a fantastic game. And it's a game on Friday night yep. on ESPN2 yep. or ESPN, ESPN. On, the, it's on, on, the on the Big, big Network. Network. Yep. So uh, we'll, uh, we can all see it. Yep. And uh, Missoula is a place where NDSU has been in all three. That's going to be a great game. Montana State gets Sam Houston State. I'm not going to tip off our picks yet, but Sam Houston barely got by Stony Brook. Montana, Montana State needed a missed extra point to beat New Hampshire. So those are two teams that probably feel lucky to be in the quarterfinals. I I think that's a game where I'll tip it off. I think Montana <laughs> State wins that game. I think Montana State's stronger. I think they're bigger, and, and I think they're due for uh, to move on. Now, the bottom half of the bracket where NDSU is, and everyone will be watching before the Bison game, it's a noon kickoff on Saturday, is Maine at Georgia Southern. Maine is the only team left out of the Colonial. You mentioned Georgia Southern last week in the vaunted uh, triple option, which ran up 50-some-odd points against Old Dominion. Now they get another Colonial team. And the possibility, and just in my mind, if the Bison can advance and Georgia Southern advance, we get that game that we were deprived of back in week two. Well, yeah, possibly. you looked at it, possibly. And uh, <laughs> Georgia Southern, Southern's uh, triple option. I'm interested in if, the, if that happens. Yeah. My first call on Sunday is going to be to Andy Rondo, <laughs> former Bison assistant and friend of mine, and I want to find out exactly how, uh, how best to try to stop the, the triple option. Do you get a sense now, after seeing the crowd on Saturday before we go here, that this town and the area has really gathered to this Bison team and ready to make a long playoff run, especially with the fact they know NDSU won't have to leave Fargo if they keep winning? Of course. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the 90s and the 80s when uh, things got to this point. When it's cold outside, we have our heaviest jackets on today, <laughs> and we're talking about football. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, and, and I think ticket sales, of course, are, are going, uh, as what I understood yep. today, uh, pretty fast. TV situation is this. The game is slated Good to be luck. on ESPN3 again <laughs> this Saturday. At the moment, as we tape this on Monday afternoon, ESPN game plan has not been added. That was the pay-per-view service, that Jeff, that many viewers in the area were able to get the game. Of course, we'll update that both in the forum and on WDAY as the week progresses. But right now, 3 o'clock, ESPN 3, the only way able to view the game. Back with stories all week in the forum and on WDAY. And then our pregame show, 1 o'clock at the Fargo Dome. It's Lehigh and NDSU in the FCS quarterfinals. And back with a new sweater. <laughs>